Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode one of how to make a gilded bot. I wanted to get this started and have an entryway into the space because right now there are no people making gilded tutorials. And I know some people are going to want to get started and not be able to find those videos. So we're going to use gilded.js. This is made by the same people that made discord.js. So there's very minimal differences. And so let's get started. So what you're going to want to do first is go to nodejs.org slash en and download the node.js LTS version. That's going to be recommended for most. You can use the current version, but uh, you could just use the LTS. Uh, that's what I use. I'm going to be switching to the current soon, but uh, yeah, just use LTS. And then you're also going to want to download VS Code from VS Code.dev. Then download this, press this download VS Code button and download for Windows or for whatever you're using, but we're using Windows. Once you finish with that, you're going to need to create a folder on your desktop. My desktop is hidden, but I'm creating a folder. And I'm going to actually view my desktop. Rename this folder. I'm going to rename this folder to Gilded uh, Bot. And everything from here out, I will use Tutorial Bot, but everything else will be whatever you want the bot to be. Right click on it, click Open with Code if you downloaded that. Or if you didn't, open it and then do cmd and then on this you want to do code dot that'll open it in visual studio we can close out of that cmd for now we're going to do everything in vs code terminal so at the top click on terminal and then click on new terminal And then from here, we're going to do npm init. That is going to initialize the package. It's going to ask for your package name. I'm going to do tutorial bot. Going to ask for the version. We could just leave that description. You could just leave it. Uh, entry point, we're going to do actually src slash index.js. And then for the test command, is going to be nothing. Git repository, nothing. Keywords, nothing. Author, you can put yourself. I'm not going to put anything. License, we could just leave it. And then it's going to ask you if that's right. So you just press uh, enter. And from here, we have this package downloaded, this package.json. We're going to npm i uh, yoded.js. And then we're going to need a few more packages. So we're going to use .env for storing our token. Uh, and then we're also going to set up MongoDB for databases, which requires MongoDB for the drivers and then Mongoose for the actual API. And then we're going to use chalk to make our console look good. So once this is done downloading, you should it should say found zero vulnerabilities. But if it says it found one, you can do npm audit fix. And it should fix them if it can. And then here's where we're going to start coding. So we're going to start out by making a .env, .env fo uh, file. And in here, we're going to define our token. And then we can do uh, exclam uh, exclamation mark. I don't know what I was saying. We can do quotation marks. And we can also add our MongoDB URL. And then we can also add our prefix. And I'm going to put my prefix as slash. You can put it as whatever you want. And now we're going we're gonna to get our token. So we're going to go and we're going to go into our gilded server. Go up here to the... Uh, 
a thing and manage bots. Create a bot. And here in bot name, you put whatever your bot name you want your bot name to be. I'm gonna do tutorial bot and hit create. Set a logo, upload a banner, whatever you want to do. Hit the token. We're gonna to go into this API tab. And then we're going to down here put the bot prefix a slash or whatever you put it as in your code and here we're going to hit generate token and it'll give you a token you can copy that click i understand save changes and then go over to your coded bot and put your token there so there's your token set and for this mongodb url we're going to go over to google uh, go to the MongoDB Atlas uh, register. And we're going to sign up. I'm just going to create a new account. So first name, put whatever your, your stuff is, password, whatever. Create your Atlas account. Then you're going to get to the onboarding screen. You can save your password. I'm not going to. Uh, it's actually going to ask you to verify your email. So I'm going to do that real quick. And then once you verify your email, you will get to the onboarding screen. Uh, what is your goal today? We're going to build a new application. What type of application? We're going to select other, put gilded bot, and then preferred language. We're going to use JavaScript. So we're going to select JavaScript. Finish. For this deploy your database, we're going to do an M0, which is going to be free. And then we're going to name the cluster. Uh, I'm going to do tutorial bot. Uh, uh, don't edit anything else uh, besides this region. You can change it. I'm just going to leave it. Uh, you can leave these tags and whatever and hit create. Now on this username, pick a username. I'm just going to do user and then I'm going to pass or, or test one. And I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to create user and we're going to save this. So let's put that into our uh, search bar, I guess. And then here we're going to add a IP address for access. We're just going to do 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 to allow access from anywhere. Anywhere. Add entry. Allowing access from anywhere is going to allow that if you put it on a hosting service, they can access your, your database so that your bot doesn't break. Then we're going to hit finish and close. And go to databases. And then we're going to hit connect. This connect button right here. And then we're going to connect through the drivers. Leave everything the same. And then we're going to copy this URL, URL right here. So we can click this copy button. We can actually paste that into our thing. Password and replace these right here. Password with the brackets. Copy that finished URL. And then we can go over and our bot and put the URL in MongoDB URL. <laughs> and so now we're going to create a folder here. It's going to be SRC. In this folder, I'm going to make an index.js. And then we're going to start, we're going to actually create the bot in this index.js. So what we're going to do here is we're going to require a dot env uh, as the dot config. Um, make sure that's a function. And then we're going to define a few things from gilded.js. 
So we're going to find the client and cache collection. And then that's going to be equals require gilded.js. Then we're going to also uh, get chalk from require chalk. So now I'm just going to do this to make it look cleaner. I'm going to do console dot clear at the beginning to clear the console every time I restart the bot um so and then we're going to actually log the starting of the bot so we're going to console dot log shock dot blue to make it look good dot blue this is this is actually really annoying, but blue, and then this is gonna be chalk dot bold to also make it look good. Bold. Actually, I forgot. I need to. We need to instead of chalk, we need to npm uni chalk and an npm i chalk at 4.1.2 just so that it's the right version and it's not an es module and that might actually help bold yes and then this is gonna i'm just gonna say system and outside of that i'm gonna talk uh white and just do a few arrows i'm gonna do chalk dot to move those chalk dot magenta we're gonna do chalk dot underline and chalk dot bold and then do bot starting and then under here we're going to define the client by passing in the tokens, so we're going to start with const client equals new client. I'm going to open that up and then do token and then make that process.env.token. And then under all of this, the defining of the client, we're going to define the commands array. So we're going to do client dot commands was new hash collection and then actually we can we can replace this from a cache collection to a normal collection so that will instead of caching instead of being a cache collection it'll just be a normal collection but um and then we're gonna uh, actually, we're going to create the handlers. So first, here, we're going to just client.login where we start with the handlers. So now if you start this, it should start the bot with no dot. And then you should see that your bot is online. You can't actually test anything to see if it's actually working, but it is online. So now we're going to create a folder called handlers dot uh no just handlers in here we're going to do an events handler dot js and then in here we're also going to do a commands handler dot js and then back in this index.js above the client dot login we're going to open an array or events handler. Actually, let's do this with FS. So, so instead of opening this array, we're going to just do for uh, const 
handler of fs dot read dir uh, sync. This is gonna read from directory dot slash src slash handlers because it's because it's fs. I forgot to fs fs dot read find fs up here, but const fs equals require. FS and this is a inbuilt JavaScript uh, package. This is going to be FS dot read dire sync. Uh, and then we're going to at the end of this read dire sync, we're going to do slash uh, dot filter F arrow function F dot ends with. Dot JS. Just so that it reads all the files that end with .js in that. Then we're going to open this up and do require uh, dot slash handlers. Here we can do dot dot slash. No, it's going to be dot slash handlers. And then slash handler and make these special. Uh, quotes the back ticks and then pass in handler then at the end of that you want to pass in client so that's going to load all of the handlers for the client then now we can get started on the events handler that's going to let uh, handle all events that we create in this uh, folder in src that we are creating and name it events and then we're going to add another folder in this called client another folder in events called message then we can add a file in client and call it ready.js and then in message we can do message created.js and then in the events handler we're going to start by defining fs. const fs equals require fs. And then const chalk equals require chalk. Then we can module.exports. Module.exports. Client, and then we can arrow function and do client dot handle uh Maybe we can uh, console.log. I'm just going to console.log an empty space here. You don't have to. I'm going to console.log again. And then I'm just going to go ahead and go to our index.js, copy this log, and I'm just going to paste it here, and then edit this. So this is still going to be system. Uh, this is still going to be the arrow and white. This is going to go to cyan the event system and then we're going to remove this bold then we're going to change this from bot starting to events starting loading uh you can actually just do events loading but uh and then we're going to copy console log and i'm just going to put another and then we can start by getting the root directory of events. So this is going to be const event folders equals fs dot read dir sync. And then we're going to do dot slash src slash events. Make sure that's spelled the same as the events folder. 
and then we're going to for each folder in the root directory of events we're going to find the files in those folder in those folders so we're going to for a const folder of event folders then this is where we're going to we're going to define each file in those folders so we're going to do const event files equals fs dot read dot sync we're going to do a uh, special quotes backticks dot slash src slash events and then slash and pass in folder and we're going to dot filter this uh, and then take files arrow function files dot ends with and we're going to see every file that ends with dot js and then under that we're going to do every uh four const file of event files so for every file every event file we're going to define the actual event so const event equals require require and then this is going to be a little bit different we're going to dot dot slash events dot, dot slash events slash uh folder then slash uh file and then what we're going to do here is we're going to do um if the event is if the event only happened happens once we're going to run it on event dot once so we're going to do if event dot once we're going to do client dot once pass in the event dot name we can pass in the args so dot 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 args and then arrow function event dot execute then pass in the dot dot args then pass in client or the dot 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 args i mean and then we're going to client dot log this so i'm going to copy this one up here and then change this so this is going to be system everything's going to be the same we're going to change this chalk dot underline to chalk dot bold and then we're going to change this chalk dot sign to chalk dot blue or no we can leave that sign so cyan so we're going to do pass into here we're going to do the event dot name and then after this chalk that blue closes, we're gonna do a comma and then pass in chalk dot green. And then we're gonna do event loaded. So now uh actually if we wait one second and put an else in this if so if we else open that up, so this is gonna run if the event only happened or if the event happens multiple times. So we're going to do uh, client.on event. We can actually copy. We can copy this. So copy everything from here, paste it, and then move this client.on. We're going to do client uh, client.on instead of client.once. And then everything else should be the same. Uh, so yeah. So now if we go into the events, into ready.js, we are going to uh, say what, what should happen whenever the client turns on. So we're going to const talk to make it look good. Equals require talk. And then this is where we're going to also define mongoose because this is where we're going to log into mongoose. So we need a const mongoose equals require a mongoose. And we're going to module dot x. That's weird. I'm not using discord.js. 
module.exports equals, and then we're going to open that up, and then we're going to do name, and then we're going to do that to ready, and then comma, we're going to go under here, and we're going to async, shoot, and we're going to pass in client, open this up, and then when the client is ready, we will uh, first define Mongo, so this should be con or define MongoDB URL. So const MongoDB URL equals process dot env dot MongoDB MongoDB underscore URL should be what it's called in our dot env, and I'm just gonna throw that in that ready. And then if there's no MongoDB URL, we will do nothing. So if no MongoDB URL, return. And then we're going to await mongoose.connect. Then this is going to connect with MongoDB URL. Then we're going to do or no string, which doesn't really matter. But we're going to put it. And then we're going to actually, this is differing from other, from the discord.js tutorials. We aren't going to do keep alive anymore. This is new. So this is only going to be use new URL parser to true. And then this is going to be use unified topology to true. And then we're going to go under this await to if mongoose connect. We're going to open it up and we're going to console.log it. So we're going to console.log. And I'm just going to do this, this open space. And then we're just going to go into the event handle and copy this console log. And then we're going to throw it there. And I'm going to change this blue to green for the database. And then this, instead of system, will be database. And then this, uh, in here, uh, this will be mongoose. And here will be online. Online. And then we are going to log the client as online so we're going to console i'm just going to copy both of these right here and i'm going to console that empty one and then we're going to go and we're going to change this up so this is going to be chalk.blue this is going to be system and then we're going to here do magenta or any color of your choice to represent the bot and then in here, we're going to do uh, client.user.name. That should not be that. So we're going to pass in client.user.name. And we can do the chalk.green online. I'm going to make it caps online. And then if you want to set the status of your bot, you're going to do client dot set status. We're going to do the content to whatever you want the status to be. I'm going to do making gilded JS tutorials, and I'm going to do the emote ID. And now this has to be an ID of an emote that the bot has access to. So I'm just going to create a new emote. I'm going to go, we're going to go to emoji.gg and then we can find an emoji we want to represent um, whatever we put our status as. So I did tutorial, tutorial, or learn. Uh maybe school 
it may be a little bit a little bit finicky to find your emojis but this is how you will get many of your emojis for your server oh uh, we could just do thinking let's do that one Ooh, thonk download the emoji hello Okay, downloaded, and then you can open up Gilded, go to your server settings, go to emotes, upload emote, find the image. It's going to be, for me, it's going to be in my downloads, too. It's going to be cool thonk. So there's your emoji. You can rename it to whatever you want. I'm going to be uh, just cool thonk. And then we're going to go back and then we're going to click on this little emoji thing at the bottom right. And then we're going to find our emoji. So this will be in bot testing server. And then we're going to right click on it. And then we're going to copy emote ID. We're going to go back to our code. We're going to paste this into there. Make sure you have a comma after this content line. So there, that should throw your bot online connect your database and then uh, set the status so now we're going to go into our message created event uh yeah event so this will happen every time a message is created so we want to uh, pass the client and prefix run a const a client and a message to who's require goaded.js make sure that is within quotes or uh, apostrophes and we're going to const prefix equals process env dot prefix and then we're going to open a module dot export module dot exports equals and then we're going to set the name as message created this has to be whatever the event name is and then we're going to set some parameters so we're going to open this up and then we're going to do the first one as at param P A R A M. Then we're going to do client. And then that is going to be client. And then we are going to do another at param. And that is going to be message. That is going to be message. So now under these parameters, we're going to do async. Not how you spell async. So we're going to do async, execute, and then we're going to pass in message, and then client. And then here we're going to say that whenever a message is created, if the message, uh, if message.content, if no message.content, content dot starts with prefix so if it doesn't start with the prefix uh or message.author.type equals zero which will say that if it is a bot we will just return so it will do nothing so here we're going to define the args of the of the command so we do const args equals message.content dot slice and we want to slice prefix dot length we want a dot trim that's a function so do that uh, we want to go past it and then we want a dot split and then that's a function open that up with slash space 
plus slash. And then we will do const command name equals args dot shift. We will shift that dot to lower case page case. And then we want to define the command. So the com uh, const command equals client dot commands dot get a command name and then or client dot commands dot find a cmd arrow function cmd dot aliases and cmd dot aliases dot includes command name so this will get the command and then if there is no command i will personally return you can set a message um and then here we can we can try to execute the command so we can open up a try statement to command dot execute pass in the message and then client and args then we're going to catch this so if it fails we're going to console dot log going to error console dot log the error and i will personally reply now I like doing these embeds in gilded.js with the JSON format. I don't know why, but it's just for me personally, it looks a whole lot better in the code, uh, better than a whole lot of dot set statements. So I will do it that way, but you can do it the other way if you know how. So we're gonna let re uh, error reply equal. And open that up and we're going to do embeds and open that up as an array and then also open that up title i'm going to add an emoji and then i'm going to do error and then i will add description i can remove all of that and then we're going to do a backslash back tick backslash back tick black backslash back tick and then we're going to do a dollar sign open it up and we're going to pass in error then we're going to do another series of backslashes and back ticks so that it puts it in a code block and then we're going to also define the color as 0x and i will use the hexadecimal and this will be red, so it will be FF0000. And then this is going to be a private reply. So after the embeds, we we want to put a comma and then do is private and set that to true. And then under defining the error reply, we're going to message dot reply and then do error reply. And then I personally would like to return message dot delete that it deletes the failed message failed command so now if i know dot okay it's gonna have uh an error where is this required dot 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 all right because i'm not even done and handler Okay, so now we're gonna do the actual command handler that sets the commands that we're getting from. And this is gonna be almost the same as the event handler. So we can go over to the event handler, we can control A, control C, and we can just paste it in the command handler. And then what we're gonna wanna change is we're going to change this uh, console.log to 
commands loading. Commands loading. And then I'm gonna actually. Okay. And then what we have to do here so instead of events folders, we're gonna create another folder in SRC, call it commands. Then we're gonna change this events to commands. Change this to of command folders and then of folder in command folders we're going to const event files change that to command files and then we're going to create another folder in here just call it utility and then i'm going to create another one in here and call it in the commands folder and just call it community and then uh, here we're going to uh, pass in, of course, like already there, but we're going to change this to uh, commands. So basically, anywhere it's referencing referencing event, you want to change it with command. So here we're going to do command files, and then const event const is equal to const command, and it changes to commands. Command change all event to command, uh, and you get rid of this uh this part right here. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to client dot commands dot set, and then command dot name, comma command. And then we're going to console.log that. So we're just going to add in that. And this should be the same as the event handler, except for just command instead of event. So this should be command.name. And now, if we start this, it should load no commands loading. So once we finish with that, the bot does get up and running, but there are currently no commands. So what you can do here is you're going to go into utility and we're going to create a ping command. So we're going to go into the utility. We're going to create a new fold, a new file, call it ping.js. Then we're going to module dot exports tools and then open it up and do name and then ping the aliases going to be an array so we're going to open this up and then we're going to do latency and then we can also do lag and then next we're going to do the description Then this is gonna send the and then we want to execute. We can just async execute, but we're not gonna use the async, so we're just gonna execute message and client, and then we're gonna open that up. So we're going to define the response first. So we're going to let response equal, and then we're going to do an embed. So we're going to embeds. Open up the array, and then open up first embed, and then do just the description. I don't need this. Description. And that is going to be, let's do a ping pong. Uh, mallet or whatever paddle and this is going to use something called ws so this is going to be this is going to do client ws dot ping we're going to make that in milliseconds because that's what it is it's in milliseconds and then we're going to change the color to uh let's do greens uh so we're going to do 0x00ff00 zero 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 zero. remember this is rgb and alpha so this is the alpha which doesn't actually take 
but it, it's just there in the hexadecimal. And this is R, this is G, this is B. Uh, and then we're going to comma there because. And then we're going to message dot reply. Fonts. Now, I do personally like to always message dot delete to make it look better. Uh, you don't have to. I, I personally like to. And then I can also uh, maybe make this private. It is private. Just in case people don't want to actually see it. So, so then there's gonna that's gonna send the ping. If I restart the bot, and then I go into goaded, and I do. Oh wait, I should probably change. I'm gonna change the tutorial bots, uh, thing, prefix to t slash instead of just slash, because I have now realized that that conflicts with my main bot. So this is going to be t slash. I'm going to restart. I'm going to go into goaded, go into whatever testing channel, and then do t slash ping. And you see it deletes the command message, and it sends the ping. And right now I'm getting zero MS because I only have one command and this is my first time running the bot. But if I T slash ping the 92 milliseconds. And then if I T slash ping again, I it's still 92 milliseconds. Pretty pretty consistent. Um so I'm gonna also make a database test command so we can make sure that the database is working so we're going to go into the utility folder and we're going to create a file called dbtest.js and we can just copy the ping.js command and paste that in there and then what we're going to do here is we're going to rename it to dbtest and then this can be db also. And then this can be database. And then what we're going to do for this description is we're going to do test. Yeah, do the whole description. We're going to do test the database connection. And we don't need to pass in a client into this one, but we will. And we can do let, uh, we can just go past this real quick. And we can put up here, let final data equal an empty string or let final data. And then we can const data equals await test schema. And you will notice that it does not show anything for test schema. So you see, and uh, so what we need to do here is in the SRC, we're going to create another folder and do schemas.js. And then this is where you're going to put all your schemas. So we're going to put a test.js. And so this test.js schema is going to include const model and schema equals require mongoose and then we want to do let test schema equal new schema and then we want to open that up and then do guild id and then we're going to do string now gilded does not use the term guild or for the i for the for the server info it uses server but we're going to use guild to just make it easier for anyone switching over so we're going to do user id and this is going to be a also a string and then below this whole test schema definition we're going to do module dot exports 
equals model. And then we're going to do name as test schema, comma, and then we're going to insert test schema. So this is the schema made. And then we can go back into the DB test. We can await test schema dot find one slash dot find one. And then we're going to find one with the guild ID of message server ID. Then we're going to find one with user ID of message dot author ID. And then we're going to if no data. We're just going to create one. So we're going to final data equals compiling data. Run it. Run command to see again. So we're going to do here compiling data. Run command in to see and then we're going to test schema dot create open it up and then guild id uh, we can actually copy all of this from the find one and we're going to format it so shift alt f and uh so it, now we want to add another one. So if data, so we're going to do uh, final data uh, equals, we're just going to do the final data equals I messed that up. So we're going to do final data equals data. And then we want to define the response. So the description is going to be the backslash, uh, back tick, backslash, back tick, backslash, back tick. And then we want to put in the uh, final data and then backslash, back tick, backslash, back tick, back tick. And then the color is going to be black. So all zeros, and I'm just going to do is private and leave everything the same. And this should be all. Now we can restart the bot, go back over to Gilded, and then do t slash db test. Is there a problem? Oh, I didn't define test schema. So you need to go up at the top and you do const test schema. Require, require, and then you want to require dot dot slash dot dot slash schemas dot s slash test. So now if we if we restart, so we do no dot, and then we go into goaded and we see t slash db test, and you see. It compiles the data, so if you run the command again, t slash db test, you'll see it shows the data. So uh, we've got the guild ID and the user ID. Now this is the same as with db test with Moody, which is not. You'll see with Moody slash db test. Uh, so in the next video, I'm going to show you how to make this slash help command, and it will be a dynamic help command. So you'll see if you do slash help, it tells you the categories, and then you can get help with slash help utility. And so it will autofill all the commands with the descriptions, uh, and we will do that in the next one. So... You guys have a good one and I hope this helps.